We will start with the drum, as you can see. Uh, we are a Harmony Studio. This is Matt. He's Hello. gonna be my assistant today, and he's usually uh, the resident engineer here at Harmony. So I work here at Harmony. We do we did a lot of things together already, but he knows the studio better than me. So when you work in 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 another studio, in a studio that you're not completely familiar with, the assistant, the the uh, resident engineer, is your best friend. So I ask Matt where we should put the drum first because he knows the room better than I do. Uh, and we already set up the microphones, so we're gonna go through each one of them, okay? So first thing, um, I, wanna, I wanna go to the snare drum because we did something different here. First of all, we are not using the usual SM57 on the top of the snare, but we are using Artworks DM20. And we are using those mics, you can see them here, also for Tom and the floor Tom. And I'm gonna just tweak the position for you guys. What I like about these mics, of course, is they're clip-on, so there's no uh, stands around the drum. It's a lot easier to mount them. Uh, about the position, what I like for drums is usually to try to point the capsule at the center of, of the drum. So in this case, we are about there, here. And I don't like to put it too close because if you followed my, my drum recording course, we said is like is like a flame, so you don't want the mic to be too close to 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 the to the drum itself. You wanna you want to leave a little bit of space so it can resonate. And this is about the distance that I like. We will do line check and we will hear each microphone individually how it sounds. But from experience, that's pretty much where I like it. Same for snare. So we try to point it. about there towards the center. And the distance is about right, especially with the snare. He's got <clears throat> the highest output, so uh, we don't want to get too close. Let's take a look at the floor tom. And a word about the room. So for this genre, we are recording basically industrial metal, we said. so. I don't, I don't necessarily need a roomy room, a reverbery room. So this, this place is perfect. We have a high enough ceiling, so it's not dead, but we have a lot of control. For this genre, I prefer that. Um, some people even record drums in booth for this reason, because in this genre, we will see that when we break down the mix, we are probably gonna use samples. Is it fits the genre, okay? Um, we are not gonna replace completely the acoustic drum. We are gonna enhance it with samples. But again, um, even the reverb, the ambience that we will add, I usually tend to prefer to add it myself unless I have a like super amazing room that most people watching this course probably don't have access to. So this is a more a, a real life situation. So after that, we have still on the snare, a second mic, which is the usual SM57 at the bottom. We will need that for sure. And then here, the wild card. So this is something I've always done with, uh, with drums in general, rock or metal. So I usually like an AK-414 on the side of the snare. So this is about the right height. And ballpark the distance between this side, the, this mic on the side and, and the mic on the, on the top. But we are about there. We will check it on, on Pro Tools um, after a first test where we are with the phase with the time alignment. So we have three microphones on the snare only, top, bottom, and side. This is still a little too low for me. So of course, the purpose of this one is to capture the body. So we have the top, the snap, the crack with the, with the DM20, the bottom with the SM57, and this one should give me the body. Because again, uh, I, will, I will enhance it with some samples, but I do want a pretty, pretty muscular snare sound to begin with. Sure 81, this is a pretty standard for, for a hi-hat position. It's about right. What I like to do is try to 
point it away from the snare as much as possible. So the mic is pretty tall, so I cannot put it right here. It would be in the way of the drummer, but you can do that. You can, you can try to put the mic even between, you know, the, the hi-hat and the cymbal so that it, it just it, it cuts out the, the bleed from the snare as much as possible. So this should be a good placement. We will hear that again while we do a first test. Next one, I actually want to go to the kick drum. And if you follow me here, we have this fancy sub kick. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, sub kick is basically a speaker uh, with inverted polarity uh, on the on the XLR cable, and it works as a microphone instead of a instead of a, a usual speaker. This one will capture the low end of the kick, of course, and it's not going to be in phase with the in mic, which is an AK a D12. You can see it there because, of course, these are going to be a different distance from 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 the beater, from the, from the head of the kick drum. Uh, we don't care. We will time align it later in mix. Okay. So the AKG D12 will give us the the punch, will give us the click of the of the kick, and the sub kick will give us, of course, the low end. Now I left the most important thing for me for last, which is the overhead. Matt placed these microphones the same, without knowing, the same way I do it, the same way I would do it. So instead of cutting the drum kit this way, we cut it diagonally. The reason to do this is because we want the kick and the snare, so the beater and the snare, to be pretty much at the center of the stereo image. Not only that, but um, this gives us also a wider um, stereo image compared to the to the space pair, which is usually what what you see for rock, for metal, for all the pop genres, which is fine. It could work. It worked for many records. I prefer this one by a long shot for for the reason for the reason I mentioned: wider stereo image, a better mono compatibility, and a more solid kick and snare in the overhead mics. So what we're gonna do now is try to measure and have the same distance uh, from uh, snare and drum beater to both mics. And we are gonna use this cable, and Matt is gonna sit at the drummer position and help me out with this. So now we are gonna put this cable here at the drum, at the bass drum, and hold it with the beater, and then measure this part. Then you'll leave it like that, put it on the center, mm -hmm. and then try to measure these two. Yeah, exactly. Give me a little more, a little less. And then, of course, we are pretty much at the same at the same distance because they are uh, dead center. So again, the purpose of placing these mics is we have a perfect centered image for kick and snare in those two mics. We would do the same thing if you want to place uh, the microphone in a, spa at a space pair position. You do the same. You hold a cable on the beater, then you measure the first mic going to the snare, and then pull the cable on the other mic and make sure they are at the same distance. That, that is a way in, in which you can have um, a centered stereo image, especially for the snare, which tend to be like more on one side when you do space pair. But this one is, is safer and, you know, it sounds better. Now let's do the last thing on the kick drum. So the last thing to do on the kick drum is to put a blanket on top of it. And uh, that will give us, of course, more isolation. It will avoid cymbals to get picked up by uh, the kick mics, the snare, all the bleeds. So we want a more isolated sound for the kick drum to try to use it as much as possible. Uh, the original sounds, uh, even though we know we're going to probably enhance it with samples, it's still always better to start with a good recording. So we place this one in front of the drums and we are going to cover it. We want to pass this cable on top. This also works not just for isolation, which is important, but it will also give us a different sound, obviously. Uh, a bit more tight, uh, which I like. 
and just more solid in general. Uh, there will be no resonances because especially the kick drum, it picks up a lot of resonances from other drums, for the snare, from the room in general. This one, it dumps it down. So um, even not just for isolation purposes, I like to, to use that on kick drum. Uh, we should probably yeah, tape it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna tape it to the drum so it doesn't move when the drummer is playing. All right, great. You wanna pass me that? Of course, always have tape in studio. That's your second best friend. And then we're probably going to do this. And make sure it touches the floor on both parts, if possible. And one important thing, the blanket that you use needs to be camo. Otherwise, it doesn't work. <laughs> good so this was take number one uh, we're probably not gonna film all the five takes and uh, we're just gonna uh, keep recording pick the best one see if there's something to comp something to fix we're gonna see that in mixing if there's some timing to do just because the genre requires to be pretty much on grid I don't like overly overly edited drums um, that's just my taste um, we'll see that in mixing but uh, yeah, that was a great first take. We are now gonna listen to it and get a feeling of like all the mics, make sure we have all the, uh, all the mics coming in, no noise, no distortion, no anything, that nothing got moved. And then we'll take it from there. Let's actually take a look at what I did for the mix, for the drum mix, uh, which I don't, I don't know if it's gonna be like the final mix in the song, but at this point, uh, I feel like confident that it's more likely going to be this one. So uh, let's see. First channel, we have the ambient room from Superior Drummer 3. You can see I just used the SSL channel. I did everything here with this one low cut and removing quite some 10 dB actually around 250 260. I'm actually gonna go eight I want it a little more beefier than this then after it there's the dry uh, snare from uh, perfect drum which sounds like this it has some sense which we will see in a minute but raw, it sounds like this. I used the stock EQ to brighten it up and remove something, a couple of dB at 200. This alone opens up uh, the whole drum bus, the whole song. After that, we have Pro-Q3, again, reshaping the high end, which is tricky. Uh, because we have a lot of guitars so you can see that push pull that I did here uh, a, a boost of almost 7 dB at 7k and a cut of um, 4 dB at 11k okay with the low cut because we don't need all that 
low end uh, below 70 and we don't have tracks interaction okay so this is a sample it's not part of the original drum so i can high pass it no problem because it has no interaction with the other tracks really uh, not the same for the original snare that we have here so you can see let me ungroup it we can see have a snare top snare bottom and snare side these three if you remember are bust all of them to the snare original aux track the yellow one here and if we take a look at the single channels i have nothing in here okay so i don't want to mess with the phase of these three microphones uh, capturing the same element and so they are in phase they were in phase when we positioned them I don't want to move them individually I want to treat this as one instrument bus it to one bus and then here for the original snare I'm doing the low cut filtering I'm doing a uh, removing 2 dB at um, 600 we will hear that in a minute so uh, let's keep going with the perfect drum snare after Pro Q3 we have the harmonic maximizer again uh, you will see me use this uh, more in this mix but it's such a great plugin so this is basically a multi-band parametric um, saturator I didn't touch the uh, single EQ uh, knobs because I like the tone of this of the snare like I said the better the better the samples the original samples the less work I have to do in mixing so I just use the drive at 52% and a little bit of push. Okay, brings it to life. Uh, after this, the snare goes to the snare parallel channel, which I'm not sure I used. Oh, actually I did. We will see that later is here. So after all my drum tracks, there's my uh, snare kick ambient track is an aux snare parallel track an aux again which needs to be sent to the drums actually and the kick sum so all our original kicks kick in and kick out and then the snare original bus so after this I sent the snare to the parallel channel which we'll see then uh, um, for now I'm not sending to the ambient I'm sending it to the snare snap. So what I wanted by listening again, the drum as a whole and all instruments together was that I needed more attack on the snare. So I put, I send it to an aux, this snare snap track. I put a transient designer in it, in this case, Mac attack from waves, and I removed all the sustain. You can see that. So let me see if I can solo it. Okay. Without it would be a copy of our of our snare track, but I removed all the sustain, so I only have the attack of it. And then in any other case, I would use one of my distressors, but I wanna what I wanna leave them for vocals later and maybe for a mono crushed drum. I don't know about it. Uh, I don't have my other two here, so. For now, I'll, I will leave those two for later on in the mix. For this one, the Arouser uh, official plugin from Empirical Labs does the job to give me more attack on the snare. It's not a complicated sound, so I don't need hardware to do that. It's just, you know, that clicky part that adds to it. So without it and with. Okay, it's not night and day, but it's noticeable. The kick drum, the dry, um, perfect drum sample kick drum. So this is how it sound without anything on it. There's uh, API 2500, one of my favorite. Tighten it up quite a lot actually especially the low end and then lo-fi just to add some harmonic content to it
there's a level boost uh, unavoidable because we don't have a compensation output here and then after that an EQ stock EQ as you can see I'm compensating by 60 B uh, lowering the output to compensate for the level rise on the lo-fi why this because we said it at the beginning when I set my levels at the very beginning of the mixing session when I did my gain staging now every process that I apply I still try to maintain the same level this helps me with two things first of all uh, preserve headroom and having the same level going into my two bus which I didn't put uh, yet but I will right now uh, after this and second because having the same level uh, with and without the processing just helps me being objective does this kick drum this EQ sounds better or just louder okay so I'm compensating this is definitely this uh, kick drum needed a little bit of high boost and you can see removing some of the mid-range that we don't need and just a gentle reshape of the low end even if it's lower in level it sounds better after that again a little more color to the kick drum with just the drive from psi eq this is just a little bit of a harmonic distortion okay so just to give an example let me play the whole mix and i will bypass all my insert on the on the kick drum Uh, on the single channel for the kick drum we don't have anything again they are in phase I don't want to mess with them singularly individually so I bust them to their kick sum uh, for the rack toms I use the original toms as well and I did basic filtering let's solo them they were pretty much well recorded so I didn't I didn't need to do much if you remember the microphones we used um, I think they were electro voice they isolated the tom really well there's very little bleed from snare and cymbals same for these other this one needed a little more boost and a little more cut in the 400 range I wasn't a fan of this microphone, this recording, the Rock Tom sounded better, but again, before doing anything to that, I wanted to add the sample, which I did. These are the samples. Which sound pretty good. Again, good selection of samples will make the mix easier. Uh, I just cut it 4 dB at 500 and added a little bit of top end 3 dB here uh, between 6 and 700 and just a basic cut of 20 just to be safe. I didn't add um, any compression or saturation yet. I will I'll probably will. Again, you will have the final section, session so you will be able to hear that and see that. But together they sound like this. Okay, they're going to the drum bus right now. I maybe bust them to their, let's make it, let's tom sum. And then the tom sum, we'll put it here with all the summing buses. Solo save it, color it the same color, and send it to the drum bus. Okay, and here I'll probably do some processing. Um, I'm probably gonna add some sort of saturation or clipping. I will go for true iron. Let's see how this sounds on him.
let me try something else before deciding this is gonna be it let's keep in the harmonic and see what we have I have a new one that I really really love which is the abuser it gets a little dirty uh, for some reason this one on on this particular on this particular track so let me try something else one thing that I like old school but it works is the classic clipper let's go for unity gain again Yeah, let's try to add iron now. Definitely love it. So I'll back off this one a little bit. And actually, I can even go, let's say, 5.8. And you can see I'm keeping the slope hard because I only want the uh, clipper to affect the very peaks, not the tail of the... Um, especially Tom sounds not that great and see how they sound with the drum let's try 1db yeah they sound okay and let me try to add a little bit of really deep low end to it and if you follow me you know my trick for the clean focus low end is always the SSL we need just maybe 1 dB Good, and actually we have way more uh, snap and attack that we, we can possibly ask for these toms. They're, they're really good, uh, I, li I like them. Uh, it's a great sample from Perfect Drum. So for now, toms stay like that. So we have our main guitars. They go to the summing bus for the rhythmic guitars. So in the mix, you notice probably we have two obvious effects for the main guitars. One is just before the breakdown, and one is at the end of the breakdown when we enter the last chorus. So before the breakdown, there's this. Okay, and this is done with the Tornado from Sugar Bites. And I used two effects, if I don't remember wrong. One is the stutter and one is the filter. And they are both automated, control one and control five. So let me open both the automations. Okay, so this one at the top is the filter. And this one at the bottom is the stutter that starts at eight, I think, or 16th. And then it goes uh, uh, so fast as 64th. Okay, fairly simple. This one is great because it has uh, so many effects in one slot. It only occupies one slot in your in your insert, and it, it has so many effects. I love it. I use it on vocals for multi effects uh, all the time. And then I think we have this one too, which is again going into the last chorus on the guitars. Super simple, it's just a filter. I just automated manually while the song was playing, just to taste. And we also have, obviously, uh, another automation for the tornado, but it's just a bypass. So when it's not when it's not doing anything, I just bypassed it just to make sure, you know, uh, the sound doesn't change. So now let me show you some other interesting automation because I did something on the actual volume of the guitars but I had to do it with a trim so 
in here you can see the automation I put this trim plug in here here you can see the automation for the left trim and the right trim okay so what I wanted to do basically was to lower the volume of one channel left or right uh, in sync with the part at certain point so let me show it So you can see one side goes down 5 dB and then right after the other side goes down 5 dB and then they come to unity again. This effect is not really uh, that much noticeable in the mix unless you know and then you pay attention to. But it has um, an effect for me that is it builds up to the end of the verse when we enter the chorus because finally when we get to that point the left and right bouncing stops and you have the whole wall of guitars for the breakdown i wanted a clunky snare and that's exactly how i called it i call it clang snare so i have three sounds that i uh, picked from different sources that's one that's two and that's three and here I applied a little bit of uh, transient designer to bring up that tail that wasn't long as long as I wanted I bust these three to a channel this clangs uh, submix here use the limiter on it And then just the SSL, just in case I needed EQ, which I didn't. And if we solo the drum at this point, okay. So I just wanted a bigger snare for the breakdown. Uh, makes sense, and that was. That was what I came up with in the song.